Any tourist coming to South Africa has three objectives. One, to climb Table Mountain, the second to see the Big Five, and the third to eat at the butcher shop. Uh, with me today is Alan Pick, the man behind those tender steaks and delicate bottles of wine. Alan, it's wonderful to be in this environment. The first question I have to ask looking around, how many bottles of wine do you have at this place? David, it's difficult bottles. It's, it's sitting at about just under three and a half million. We work in rand terms, so it's mm. easier for us to track. So at this present stage, we're sitting about three and a half million rands worth of wine. But you must be one of the biggest consumers of wine in this country. We in are. Term, other than maybe a bottle yeah, store. Yeah, but you must understand we've got two licenses. We have an on consumption and an off consumption. What's so the, Okay, your, your on consumption is permission, a uh, legal license to sell uh, uh, liquor mm. on the premises. And you have a separate license called an off-consumption, which is basically a bottle store license. Mm -hmm. So we're in a unique situation. We, we, we believe in three bites of the cherry. We want the guy to come here. He enjoys the meat. We sell him the meat in the butchery. Um, he likes the glass. We'll sell him the so glass. So you can, you can buy meat Absolutely. in the butchery? Absolutely. There buy is a butchery. You know, the butchery is a retail butchery. It's, it's, uh, I like to say it's one of the biggest in, uh, in the country. Um, we, we, we draw parallel with uh, our various oppositions, the, the big chains and Don't everything. Don't mention their names. No, 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 no. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we go through nine times of meat a week. We age the meat correctly. We go through 250 lamb a week. I won't bore you with statistics. No, I love the statistics. To, to get back to the, to the liquor, uh, the guy likes the wine, we sell him the wine. We have a discounted um, mm -hmm. rate for, for off consumption. We control the Cape Winemakers Guild, which we have done for the last 12 years. We spent 2 million rand a year, the Cape Winemakers Guild, um, just just for the, for the, the, the people out there. It's, it's, it's a body of winemakers mm that are elected by their peers and we have an auction on the first week of October okay. it's called the Cape Winemakers Guild and we, we've been the biggest buyers for the last 12 years. Um, now Southern Sun has started getting involved as well which is great. Who chooses those ones? We do four tastings a year. Okay, We do uh, not only that, the individual winemakers normally send me a bottle, I go down and I do... Do I you spend, do it yourself? I mean, I do it, I've got a panel of guys mm. that go with me, there's four of us. And uh, I also go down, I'm often in the Cape, so I go out and, uh, for example, uh, Buchanan's Club, which is one of the, the mm. it, it, it actually ended up as the number one seller uh, mm. last year, the highest price. Um, I, I, I didn't buy much of it the previous year, and the winemaker, Mark Ken, got upset, and he said, well, I need you for the day. So I spent the day with him, and we, we did a lot of tastings and barrel tastings and bottle tastings. I want to pat myself on the back because it, it, it got the biggest price, uh, the, it got the highest mm. price mm. On, on the auction. So this is so a meat and wine place? It's red meat, red wine. Red yeah, wine. absolutely. Absolutely. I, when I look around, you have the most beautiful drawings of historical Joburg here. Is there any of your history in Very much those so. drawings? Very much so. It's, it's not historical uh, drawings of... of um, of, of Joburg, mm. okay. We, we took uh, uh, historical pictures which we adapted, and mm. um, okay. the same guy who did um, Gold Reef City, um, mm. God, I forget his name. You give him your memories, and he draws it in. So there's a picture of my okay. late parents, a picture of myself, and the only picture I had of myself from from the, the archives, so to speak, was Baba Mitzvah photo, which is <laughs> 1961. So that's there, and then. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. the whole family and everything's involved there. Were you fa the, the point I was getting to, were, was your family involved in the industry? Involved would be an understatement, okay? <laughs> As you know, um, uh, a lot of the, the Jewish population in South Africa mm -hmm. were Lithuanian based. Mm -hmm. And my father, I was uh, came out here in I think the early 20s. Mm -hmm. And at one stage, uh, direct first cousins, second cousins, there were eight butchers which the trade under the name Farmers Meat Supply. There was in Woodstock, in Weinberg. Uh, my, my, late mother, my grandfather took my late mother out of school at the age of 17. And I think, I stand to be correct, in 1937, and she was the first woman butcher in South Africa. In 1937. Were they Cape based? Or? All Cape Town based. I'm from, uh, I, grew, I was born in Cork Bay, and I grew up and schooled in Musenberg. Okay. okay. And my late mother was, at that stage, the only woman butcher in South Africa. Jeez. And then she, uh, she married my father. I was born in 48. 
Um, and uh, we had the butcheries till the 70s um, when, when they retired. When did you make the move into restaurants? Restaurants from the, uh, the beginning of the 70s. I started as a waiter at the Golden Spur. That was, in, a, that was that at Rosebank? In, in, no, I'm talking Cape Town now. Oh, Cape, okay. In Newlands, in Dean Street okay. in Newlands. Mm -hmm. Alan Amber opened up, I think, three years previously. And uh, I worked as a waiter. Now, and I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> We're talking pound, shilling and pence then. Yeah. No, no, we're not. We're still on rands. Yeah. Uh, when was pound, shilling pence? 60s, 60s, 1960s. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, I did what was called the horseshoes. There were the four horseshoes mm. that was my sort of domain. Mm. And uh, um, I used to get a tip in coins. Mm. And I used to look the guy in the eye. The, 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 <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, sir. I've got strict instructions from my mother. I'm only allowed to accept paper. <laughs> and he used, to, and he used to take the grade, give me a red. And a red was a lot of money in yeah, those days. I, think I was earning maybe 170 rand a month or something like that. Uh, my That's total earnings so on tips and everything in that day, you know. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I started in Joburg, I had a flat in Prospect Road, Berea. Mm -hmm. I think I was paying, I don't know, 40 rand a month. I don't know, it was some mm -hmm. sort of ridiculous figure. I used to come out. You know, what we spent on a meal now, <laughs> I, I, I was paying rent in those days. <laughs> Where did the butcher shop come from? I mean, as, this as is a fact. Know, this okay. is not even right, a, this is not a right, restaurant. Just to get into history a little bit, mm. I, I've had 30 different restaurants over the last 47 years, okay? Um, from the spur, I had, uh, I went over to the UK and I brought back Pizza Land. I don't know if you remember I Pizza remember, Land, yeah. I brought back Pizza Land. Then I got involved in Hillbride, Miva Me, the first word across the road, Late Night Owls I started, um, which we sold off and that bit. Then afterwards, um, I, um, we had Giuseppe's. Then I went public with, with um, Mark Wayne with the Don and, and Costa. And that didn't work for me. I didn't, I'm not a public, um, no. a public company <laughs> kind of guy. Anyway, one of my, uh, my job definitions at that stage was site selection mm -hmm. and I'd identified this what happened was it's all a question of timing we were in village walk we had a very successful Al's Burgers mm -hmm. Giuseppe's was pumping in those days mm -hmm. and I always said and I said to the developers of uh, village walk at the time I said guys you're not trading on your strengths you're trading on Santon's weakness mm -hmm. this is before Santon Square was invented so mm -hmm. to speak then Bart built uh, the, yeah. um, the, the Michelangelo and everything sort of fell into place and a lot of people know you're on the wrong side there's no sun I said guys because I was securing the sites for the Don Group at that stage. And I'd earmarked this, uh, there was a steakhouse, I can't remember its name, I think it was something, something, whatever. And I earmarked it and I went after it, I did a deal with Bart, and I took that. And subsequently we took, uh, 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 Robbie Brosen came here with Tushkas, which didn't work, and uh, we moved the square up, we moved Robbie in, and then there was a Japanese on the other side. And slowly, slowly I ended up with, I've got 1,500 square meters now. How many customers does that translate into? It's between 20, 27, five, I'd say between 28 and 30,000 a month. But remember the butchery as well is included in that, mm. okay? The butchery is, mm. is, 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 is uh, pedestrian traffic, so mm. to speak. Do you fill this restaurant every uh, Saturday? We, we, we do two and a half settings uh, a night. Yeah. Yeah. We're happy now, as you can see, we're in the middle of a construction mm -hmm. site. Liberty have finally got it together, and I must, I must stop my cap to them. They've done a hell of a good job. Mm -hmm. We're losing the outside area for mm -hmm. three months, but we, um, we're putting in, as you can see, we're busy mm -hmm. retiling and everything now. We're spending 10 million rand on renovations. Uh, I'll say that again so my bank manager can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> 10 million on renovations. Um, so we'll be moving the seats mm -hmm. inside into the passage, mm -hmm. so we won't be losing uh, seats, yeah. uh, customer traffic. We might do 60 mm -hmm. seats um, a, a night, which is not the end of the world. We'll live with it. It's winter, June, July, August, and we'll open again, please God, in October. And Alan, you've, you've opened in Cape Town. Do you have any ambitions to go beyond the two restaurants? Or? No. I mean, this is... Well, I'll give you, you can translate this, okay? <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's an old vernacular. <laughs> Is, is my late mother used to say, you got one tochus, you sit on one chair. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you want to translate that to, to your viewers. Mm. Uh, you've got to concentrate. My son is the most wonderful human being, and the two of us are, <laughs> which is normal. <laughs> it's a normal... Uh, pleasure there. <laughs> he runs... Um, I, had, um, I had my son in Switzerland for five years. Mm. 
He's, he's, he's far more professional than I've ever been. And he runs Cape Town. He designed Cape Town. I'll show you some pictures later. It's a magnificent shop. It's opposite the uh, Money Point Lighthouse. I mean, now with the load shedding, there's only two lights in the whole of Bully Point. Right. The lighthouse and us, because mm. we've got a generator. <laughs> I would have thought, though, with, uh, with tourism, you know, that that would have been a, a major area. It is a major other. area. It's a phenomenal mm. site. We, 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 we get in mm. an incredible profile of people. We get in what I like to call the independents. Mm. Lawyers, advocates, mm. businessmen. You want a level of ambience where they can sit. You've got private little mm. nodes where you can go mm. and do what you got to do and uh, we full every night mm. and lunch it's, it's pure destination mm. which is in mm. itself uh, um, uh, um, endorsement of what we do because people drive there's lots of parking there during the day and it, it's working for us it's working we're for gonna us. have to cut short because the time goes incredibly fast it's a short program mm. but it's so wonderful to hear where you've come from where you're going but I have the last one is what makes a magic state what do you do to it that make people want to keep coming back here all well, the time? Well, it's all about consistency. You talk about coming mm, back. Mm. You know, anybody can push out a good steak once. Mm. It's, a, it's a consistency. Number one, the meat has got to be correct in the sense that we've got certain suppliers. We deal directly with mm. six or seven abattoirs. So we know we're mm. sourcing it correctly. And the big thing and where the money comes in, it's the aging. Mm. Um, you're more than welcome to take a shot of my fridge. I've got three million rands worth of meat in there at any <laughs> given time. Three, three and a half million rands with the wine and three million rands with the meat. And my bank, uh, my bank wants to know why the overdraft is so high. You've got to age the meat. There yeah. is no shortcuts. Um, there is no shortcuts, okay, David. Yeah. And, and, and you know, you, yeah. you've got to ensure that you're putting the best product on the plate. Yeah. Then, of course, it's the consistency of the grill. The grillers, we've had the same team. Yeah. I've been blessed. I've got a staff of 220 people. 160 of which have been with me between 25 and 35 years. Mm. And that's my biggest asset. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the staff are loyal. Uh, we have a camaraderie here which mm. is unbelievable. No, I, you feel that when you come And in. not only that, they, they're big earners. My, my staff, mm. my, my, my waiting staff earn a lot of money and they deserve it. They deserve mm. everything they can get. We're going to have to leave it there, but I just have to leave you with one thought. I go to Omaha every year. I did, couldn't go this year. Yeah. but. I eat their steaks and everybody brags about those steaks and I just have to tell you one thing there, they can't compare with a butcher shop. Well thank you for the compliment. You've been on the couch with David Shapiro and Mr. Butcher Shop himself, Alan Pick.